All right, fellas. Uh, this is the boat I was b building, but that's not the video. But, uh, what's my setup? What, what camera setup am I using now? Uh, right now, I'm shooting on a Panasonic GH4. Haven't particularly enjoyed it or liked it. Really don't like it at all. Uh, but the camera I wanted was the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, but it wasn't available until now. It's still not widely available. Considering I have a business to run, I needed a camera to get footage, and it served its purpose. It is a workhorse, and it does the job. Considering that I want to turn my fishing videos into true documentary films, you know, I want a cinema camera, period. What about audio? I'm using a Rode Video Mic. It goes to a DXA Micro Pro, which is basically a preamp, and that goes into the uh, GH4, that, and that's how I get my audio. I'm a fisherman. Many of you may not know that, who are new to the channel. I'm a, that's what I do. If I'm fighting the fish of a lifetime out there, I don't have time to be turning on the camera, hitting the record button on the audio, syncing it all, and trying to sync it while I'm trying to fight the fish of a lifetime. That's what you call ridiculous. So, I need something that's going to sync everything in the camera. Now, I don't like the audio quality of the GH4 at all. It's not even CD quality or something. I have to look at the specs on that. But this preamp is very good and it's far better audio than I've had before. And I would expect this, what you hear here, is like an absolute minimum. <laughs> I would rather get a true XLR microphone, which this has an XLR input. I have a small rig cage. The whole G4, their G4 cage rig, because um, it has the top handle, the cage, the rails, and a lens support, and uh, that works well for me. I, I, you know, lightweight is not my thing. I don't care if the camera's heavy. I, I use tripods and monopods uh, just exclusively, very nearly exclusively. And so, what lenses do I use? I use Canon FD lenses. That's all I use. I use Canon FDs. I, uh, my, currently, I use the FD 24 millimeter, the 50 millimeter, and the 70 to 200 zoom. So basically, two primes and a zoom. Covers 89% of what I need. If I could get one or two more lenses, it would probably be to get the 20 millimeter. So when I'm on the boat and I'm out there on the water, uh, the 24 millimeter because I'm in a small boat the 24 is just a little bit too close and I'm not getting enough of the landscape in so I need a true sort of landscape lens to make that work and a 20 millimeter Canon FD would be perfect for it if I got one more lens over that I'd probably get the 35 millimeter that way I have 20 24 35 50 for my primes and if you think about a kit lens, that's pretty close to an 18 to 55 kit lens or whatever the equivalent is on either full frame or, uh, or micro four thirds or whatever. And then the 70 to 200 gives me some nice portrait and telephoto shots as well. And a lot of my B-roll shots just come straight from the 70 to 210. Very cost effective. I use an RJ camera Canon FD to micro four thirds focal reducer slash adapter speed booster if you will turbo booster whatever they're calling them these days. It just stays on the camera. I know I don't even take it off anymore. Um, you know I like it. It gives you a field of view that's similar to like a Super 35, and you gain a stop of light because those big FD lenses uh, it, that the reducer will reduce the focal the circle to better fit the scent the smaller sensor so it's really great this 50 that I'm working here this that 1.850 starts looking like 0.95 or something you know uh, a 2.8 starts looking like a like a like a 1.8 but again what I really want to do is expand and grow into M m turning my fishing videos into documentary films. Next week, I'm, I gotta get on the river, get more fish, but next week I'm launching a new show on this channel called Brim and Blues, where it's about the fishing lifestyle, where we follow a fledgling online fishing tackle shop owner, me, as he explores his local waters while fighting diabetes and depression. That's the gist of the show. And I'm going to be using this setup that I have right now to start out with it. 
hopefully either saving up or hopefully either uh, even maybe even selling this camera maybe even keeping this camera and just buying another camera to add to it as my a camera and use this one just for b work whatever i don't you know i'm more interested in telling stories at the time when i bought this back in april something that was durable proven something i could afford something i could afford to rig out and something that would be a lot better than what I had, which was my old Nikon D3300, which I absolutely hated. The Black Magic Pocket, what the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera is to me, it's a $6,000 cinema camera that you can buy for $1,000. That's the magic of it. The question is, what's the availability of it? Are there going to be any teething problems? Because all these cameras have teething problems coming out the gate. They're cramming a lot of technology into these small cameras. And you can't take a $6,000 camera, cram it down to $1,000 without, by definition, some compromise. I think the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera is going to be the camera for people who are wanting to do independent films, documentary work, even if you're professional doing wedding. And I'm, you could, I'm a professional because I have my own fishing tackle on online fishing tackle shop. So I need good gear. And being a former musician, uh, I want professional gear but I gotta be able to afford it. But that's it, GH4, Rode Video Mic, DXA Micro Pro, uh, small rig kit, cage kit, got the whole kit. Canon FD lenses, 24, 50, and 70 to 200. And that's working fairly well for me right now. I wanna get into more color grading, learning that is a skill that I wanna get to and I think the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera will definitely give me that. I like to have two Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras, so you can have A cam, B cam, so I can, instead of just talking to this one spot, I can look over here and talk to that camera and talk to that camera. Also, too, on the boat, I can have one camera here, just like you see here, and then have a second camera with a telephoto lens on it that I can get B-roll while I'm waiting for fish to bite. While, while I got my rods out, nothing's really happening, grab the other camera on a monopod and just start looking see if you can't find some wildlife there's always some birds ducks cormorants uh there's fish jumping there's other boaters uh you know it would be great to be able to just you know with that 70 to 210 especially when you add in crop factors and all that micro four thirds give you reach man and here's another thing i don't hear anybody really talking about much with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera and even cameras like the GH4, GH5s, any of your Micro Four Thirds cameras, is that Micro Four Thirds is the modern equivalent of the old 16 millimeter film. If this were 1970, 1980, 1960 even, would I be shooting on 35 millimeter film? No, I'd be shooting on 16 millimeter film. TV, news stations, independent movies, independent filmmakers, uh, documentary film, they're all done on 16 millimeter. There's been a big, crazy, mad rush to full frame. Everybody wants full frame. Well, what's full frame? Well, I don't want to talk about that in nausea. I like Micro Four Thirds. Why? Because it's the modern equivalent of the 16 millimeter. It, it's, it's, it's always been the affordable option. And because of the mass availability of Micro Four Thirds, that is a great option for anybody that was shooting on 16 millimeter, now all of a sudden they get a sensor that's like way bigger, two, maybe even three times bigger. That's why I'm happy that with the new Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, they went with a true uh, six uh, micro four thirds sized sensor. You have access to basically every camera lens that's ever been made. If Panasonic took their EVA-1 and just made a micro four thirds version of that camera, I think that would be perfect for a lot of people like me who are shooting on SLR mirrorless type cameras but are wanting to move to cinema cameras but I certainly don't have a need for a $10,000 C300. I've said that. I like, I want to experiment with RAW. I want to, I just get time to rebuild my computer. Why not take advantage of RAW? 
If I add a second camera, why buy a GH4 when I can buy a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera for exactly the same price and get almost like an order of magnitude more capability? If you have any more questions about the kit that I'm using and why I use this and what I would, but what do you use? What's your rig? What rig have you used that absolutely hated that made you want to go buy a whole new rig? <laughs> what rig do you wish you had? If you if you had 10 grand to spend, what would you buy? I ought to do. I ought to do a. I ought to do a. Yeah, that'll be a video. If you had 10 grand, what rig would you have? Yeah, let's do that. Next.